Thank you, Zoom. Yes, this meeting is being recorded. And uh, once again, welcome to the secret of emotional intelligence. Uh, can everyone, if you can, just quickly turn your cameras on real quick. I just want to take a quick, quick look uh, at those beautiful smiling faces. You can uh, turn them back off if you need to protect your bandwidth. So you can uh, join us here. Let's have a look at some of these faces. I am seeing some familiar faces. Thank you, guys. Awesome to see you again. Welcome to come back. If it's your first time joining us, uh, welcome to Coachology. Uh, welcome to these webinars. We, we, we do them about once every uh, week or two weeks or so. So thank you everyone for joining us today. So we've got one hour. Let us jump straight in. I am going to have some slides to share with you guys. I want to add as much value as I can. If you need to um, leave the session early for whatever reason, uh, the session is being recorded and will be uploaded to YouTube later this evening. Let's do this, guys. So the secret to emotional intelligence. Um, now, on our YouTube channel, guys, there's probably about 40 webinars that have been uh, recorded and uploaded. Uh, if you enjoyed today, go ahead and check out our YouTube channel. Feel free to subscribe. And we also have a Facebook group called uh, 60 Second Leadership, where we share uh, some top tips and techniques for leaders in uh, leadership, coaching, communication, EQ, and so on. And I'll send you the links uh, to the access those a little bit later. But for today, let's take a look. What is our agenda? Why is emotional intelligence important? Why should we care? What are the emotional triggers and how to become aware of them? Are you addicted to negative emotion? Wow, I only learned this concept of uh, emotional addiction maybe a bit over a year ago. <sighs> Mind blown. So I can't wait to share that with you. Emotional refractory period. This is basically, guys, how long it takes you to get over an event. So if you're angry, right, how long do you want to hold on to that emotion? This amount of time, this amount of time, or do you want to hold on to it for months and sometimes even years? Clearly, as least amount of time as possible. Your response moment to moment determines the quality of your life. Three powerful tools to manage your emotions and as much as we can get through. Now, as always, guys, um, what we're sharing here today, what you guys are learning is truly world-class. Here at Coachology, we provide training to organizations and individuals in 20 plus countries uh, around the world. Uh, online is my life now. I've got this little dot at the top of my computer here. And this is session number two of four today. I've got four workshops today. Uh, so this is my life now. And um, I'm actually very grateful for a good Wi-Fi connection and that we can actually connect with a larger audience all around the world. So rest assured what we're learning today is world-class. And as always, guys, I invite you to contribute and share uh, into the chat box as well. Let's try and keep this a little bit fun and in engaging as much as possible. Let's get clear on some definitions, shall we? Emotional intelligence means being aware that our emotions drive our behavior and impact people, they have an effect on people, both positive and negative. And emotional intelligence is also about learning how to manage our own emotions. Why would we want to manage our emotions? Because emotions drive behavior. So in other words, if we're experiencing some of those lesser emotions, those negative emotions, then that will result in a certain behavior. And the opposite is also true. Those positive emotions of happiness, joy, love, uh, confidence, and so on, when we feel those emotions, that will drive a very different behavior, right? We're clearly going to get better results. So as we become aware and manage those emotions in ourselves, then of course we can influence the emotions of others. Is that important if you're a leader, guys? Yes or yes? Absolutely, yes. If you are a leader, you want to be able to positively influence your environment as you're working towards the common goal, whatever that is in the organization. If you're a coach, do you want to influence your clients to, to decide good actions and to help to keep them accountable? Absolutely. So 
it looks a little bit like this. Let's have a look at here at the mechanics of our emotion and what's going on. When we think about emotions drive behavior, well, we have our thoughts moment to moment. Let me get my little pointer here. Your thoughts moment to moment, together with how you use your body language. So body language is really plays an important part in how we manage our emotions. Now, that synergy between the thoughts that you have moment to moment together with how you use your body language creates what we call your emotional state. And your emotional state is simply your feeling at this moment in time. Now, why is that important is because your emotions drive your behavior and your behavior is simply your actions or it's what you do, right? So again, you feel good you'll take good, empowered, positive, confident actions, which is going to create great results in your life, right? But the opposite is also true. If you're negative, if you're frustrated, if you're angry, if you're overwhelmed or any of those lesser emotions, well, then your behavior is going to respond directly to how you feel. So in summary, how we manage our emotional intelligence, our EQ, is so, so important because your emotions equal your results, right? Emotion drives behavior, that's your actions and what you do equals your results. So in other words, your results are a direct reflection of your ability to manage your emotional state moment to moment, right? The, the, the more you can sustain those positive emotional states, the better the results that you will achieve right? Now, this doesn't mean that you're controlling every single thing that's happening in the world around you. This is not about that kind of control. We can always control our emotional state with practice and the right tools to be able to respond, to behave and act in a specific way to achieve the results that we want to achieve. Right. Now, what, why is emotional intelligence important? Emotional intelligence, you can call it EI or EQ, however you want to call it. I like EQ. Why is your high EQ important? Check this out. Did you know it feels good to feel good? Did you know that? It feels good to feel good. So that's why it's important. If you could choose how to feel moment to moment, you'd want to choose to feel good, right? Why else is it important? Emotions equals results, as we just covered. EQ, higher emotional intelligence, gives you better decision making. Why? Because when we're in those lower emotions, anger, frustration, overwhelm, we are often reacting. We're reacting in a nanosecond, and that will negatively impact the world around us. So when we embrace those more positive emotions, we can see things as they are. We can look at things more logically and then we're able to make better decisions. You are good to be around, right? When you are feeling good, people want to be around you, right? Now tell me guys, into the chat box, please, nice and quickly. What else, why else is emotional intelligence important? If you can pop your answers into the chat box, please. Yes, even feeling great is better than good. Exactly. It feels great to be great. Yeah. To make the environment harmony with others for emphasis. Yeah, absolutely. More energetic. Nice, nice. Better working relationship with the team. Yeah. Who likes to be around a grumpy pants? You know, we've all worked with someone like that. Their face looks... Mm, they're, they're just not fun to be around at all. So don't be that right? It attracts more positive things into our own life. Exactly, Elizabeth. Whether you believe in the law of attraction or not, guys, it actually is a thing. So the more positivity, the more joy, the more gratitude, the more appreciation, all positive emotions, the more that you express and feel those, the more the universe will give you uh, situations and scenarios where you get to feel that even more. Uh, quickly recognize negative emotions before spiraling out of control. I exactly. What a great point, Max. 
And this is not to say that we take negative emotion and, and we're like this, la, 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 la. I'm not angry. I'm not sad. I'm not depressed. This, this webinar is not about that. In fact, one of, the, one of the best gifts that you can give yourself is the ability to process those emotions in a full and healthy way right, to process them in a full and healthy way. For example, uh, grief, right, the emotion called grief, when, when a, a loved one or family member has passed away. Of course, you're going to miss them. Of course, you're going to feel sad. Of course, there are going to be tears, right? But this is this emotional refractory period we were talking about. If you are still feeling depressed and sad and crying every single night 10 years later, well, perhaps that's a little bit long, right? And that's not to devalue the impact that that person had on your life. I know that if they're up there looking down on you in, in, in another life, they would not want you to feel that way. So you want to fully and in a healthy way express those emotions to get yourself back on track, right? We do need to acknowledge it and deal with it in a, full, in a healthy way, right? Now, same with anger and frustration and so on, except your emotional refractory period should be a lot shorter, right? Now, what, what's a good amount of time, guys, by the way, with, with the exception of grief, right? That's very personal for many people, but let's take, you know, anger, frustration and so on. What is, and tell me the answer in the chat box, what is the appropriate amount of time that we should hold on to that negative emotion? Put your answers in the chat box now. What do you think? For anger, frustration, or sadness, right? What is the appropriate amount of time that we should hold on to that negative emotion? Yeah? What is it? Is it a day? Is it a week? Is it, is it a month? Yeah, I think you're on the right track there, guys. Yeah, as short a time as possible, right? As short a time as possible is the correct answer. Because, of course, it's going to depend from situation to situation, person to person. But generally speaking, you want to get the lesson from that negative emotion. That negative emotion is there to teach you something about yourself. So those negative emotions are a message from your subconscious mind, right? To pay attention and go within to look at how you can better manage your emotions, right? So why else is emotional intelligence important? Better health and well-being, right? It's been proven now that negative thinking and negative emotion causes um, illness and disease in the body. So if that's true, then the opposite must be true, that if positive thoughts and positive emotion are our diet, then we're going to have better health and better well-being. It'll give you better resilience so that when the stuff does hit the fan, you won't be able to just react in anger. You'll be able to, to deal with the situation and bounce back a lot more quickly. You'll have a greater ability to respond instead of react. You'll be more productive and efficient. So many, many ways there, guys, of why it's important. So who can tell me, what is the secret? What is the secret to emotional intelligence? What do you think? Pop the answer into the chat box. What is the secret? Let's see here. What is the secret? The mind, the webinar, <laughs> nice one, Fred, I like you. <laughs> awareness, 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 awareness. Uh, yeah, call it awareness, call it self-awareness, however you want to call it. This is the first step. You want to shine the spotlight into your subconscious mind and you want to be aware of why you do the things that you do. Now, this word awareness, it's kind of pretty general, right? It means lots of things to lots of different people. I think I read it recently, a quote by Carl Jung says, uh, until the 
subconscious becomes conscious, it will direct our life and we will call it fate, right? So awareness is really about shining the spotlight on your subconscious programs. You see, we are only consciously aware 5% of the day. 95% of the day, we are operating on our subconscious programs, beliefs, and perceptions. And so in other words, to be subconscious is to be below our conscious awareness, which simply means we are not aware. Now, our emotions are from the domain of the subconscious mind, right? Our conscious mind is your very logical, uh, linear, you know, your thinking mind. That, that's the conscious mind. Our emotions, try and hold an emotion for me. How, wh how do you hold <laughs> an emotion, right? So emotions are from our subconscious mind. So if you want to manage something that is, unconscious, subconscious, unconscious that you are not aware of, well, step number one is to become aware, to become aware of your own program. What do I mean by that? Or let's get it, let's get even more important here. How do we become more aware so that you can improve your emotional intelligence, right? Are you ready for this? Here are the two points. This is how we, be, we develop greater awareness. Number one, know your triggers. What do I mean by that is uh, as you go about your day, there will be certain events or situations or things or people or whatever that are going to trigger an emotional response in you. Now, remember, 95% of the day, we're operating on our subconscious program. So we're not even aware most of the time. So by simply becoming aware of what triggers you, what pushes your buttons, then as you become aware of that, then it no longer has as much power over you because you are now shining a spotlight on that trigger, on those things. So that's number one. Number two is choose your reaction or your responses. Right. So step number one is to first become aware of your triggers, because did you know that they are everywhere? Your triggers are everywhere. Now, the, the truth is you may not be able to change your trigger. You know, your boss's face, you know, his or her face. Maybe some of you get triggered when you see your boss's face on a Monday morning. Like you come in, you've had a nice weekend. Yeah, yeah, nice weekend. And you see your boss. And almost instantly, you are in a negative emotion, right? So that is a trigger. Now, unless you change jobs, that trigger is always going to be there. So in parallel to becoming aware of what your triggers, you may choose a different response. So in other words, the trigger remains the same, but you choose to react differently. Now, you can only, know, you can only do that if you know what the trigger is is but when you know the trigger then you can instead of just reacting in that nanosecond you can take a breath you can do whatever you like and you can choose to respond in a different way and in that moment you are reclaiming your power and you are increasing your emotional intelligence right so tell me guys uh before i pop these words up here what are your triggers Right. Who, who would like to share? And this is a, a safe space. We can be open here. We can share. What are some things that trigger you? Please pop them into the chat box now. What are some things that that trigger you? <laughs> nice one, Pasa. My old boss told me once that if you come to the office and see my face, you're still happy and there's something wrong. <laughs> OK, here are the triggers. Someone being rude. Yeah, a deadline, my mum, uh, success and wins, too much demands at the same time, a deadline, unorganised work, yeah, not acknowledging the efforts, right? So lack of appreciation or lack of gratitude. Wow, my wife, Christy, uh, Coach Christy, MCC, you want to you piss her off? You, you show a lack of appreciation and gratitude. <laughs> um, drained mental energy. 
only happy ones can make other happy. Someone telling you you're not good enough. Nice one, Kelvin. Yep, disrespect. Ooh, that's a big one. Uh, triggers can be positive, right? Absolutely. Here's an example of a positive trigger. What happens when you listen to your favorite music from when you were a teenager, right? Like the song comes on the radio or you're walking in somewhere and you hear that certain song play. Oh, that's a trigger for a positive emotion. They're good. You don't need to take those away, guys. In fact, you can install more positive triggers. Repetitive wrong behavior, appreciation and recognition, <laughs> feeling wow. Okay. All right. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much for sharing. It makes it so much more fun. So let's take a look here, guys, because it's we can break it down and be quite specific here, right? You, you can be very specific. And what we're talking about here with triggers is, again, about triggering those emotional states. Now, you can have external triggers. Those are triggers that are going to be happening outside of you. That can be somebody, the boss, your wife or your ex-wife. It could be uh, a, a friend. It could be this person that you don't like. That per Somebody can be the trigger. Just the sight of them and you're like, Ooh, makes you feel a certain way. A certain place, right? Certain places can trigger you in a certain way. Maybe it was where you got married. Maybe it was where you had a big fight with someone. Maybe it was like some traumatic event that happened in your life. So some place some specific time. It could be a certain time of the day, you know, five o'clock on a Friday afternoon. What do we do? Whoop, whoop, everybody in the house. Or that time could be at eight o'clock on a Monday morning when you're making that commute to work, right? So it could be a specific time, right? Some people on a Sunday evening at, at, at about, you know, five o'clock on a Sunday afternoon, they get Monday-itis, as they start thinking about going back to work on the Sunday afternoon. A certain situation or event, as, as you mentioned, someone says this, a lack of respect or lack of appreciation. A certain behavior, right? Continually doing the, the wrong behavior time and time again. It could be a certain environment, right? So similar to some place, it might be in a, in a specific environment. There could be a smell associated with that. These are all external triggers and we have internal triggers as well, which can simply be a memory, right? You can be just sitting at home and then all of a sudden this random memory comes from somewhere. And as you focus on that memory, you start to feel a certain way. It could be a physical pain. I don't know, think like a mosquito bite or you kick your toe on the coffee table or something like that. That can actually cause a negative emotion. And a big one here, guys, simply negative thoughts. Thoughts create emotion. So when we have the habit when we have the program of negative thinking, in other words, we're, when we're really good at negative thinking and it's part of our program, which is mostly unconscious, then those negative thoughts with enough focus and repetition, those negative thoughts will create a negative emotion inside of our body. Now, remember, emotions drive behavior and those behavior create your results. So in other words, you can feel bad simply by thinking about it. So your mental health is so, so important, guys, on a day-to-day -day basis, because you don't even need any of these external triggers. If you're really good at negative thinking, you can just be thinking, you know, and when we think about, you know, uh, fear or anxiety, what anxiety is, is thinking about all of the things that might go wrong. And as we think about all those things that might go wrong, well, we don't feel good about it, right? So, you know, yes, we have these external triggers um, and we need to manage these internal triggers uh, as, as best we can. So this is what happens when we get reacted, right? When we get triggered, when we get plugged in. When our triggers are fired, we typically react in a certain way. 
those reactions might be anger or frustration. We might be sad or depressed. We might be anxious or fearful. We might be overwhelmed or confused. We might feel criticized or judged, betrayed. Uh, we might feel lonely and unloved. These are just some examples of what those triggers can uh, fire off inside of us, right? So clearly, we do not want to feel that way. So what if, guys, ch check this out. So remember, being aware of the triggers, that is going to help you massively by simply knowing that that thing, that event, that person, that place, that whatever it is, is going to trigger you. With that awareness, you're taking back, you're reclaiming your own power. So the question is, what if we did not react to those triggers? What if we could think about this for a moment? What if you were so resilient? What if you did not take things personally? Check Don Miguel Ruiz, the four agreements. What if it didn't matter what anyone said or did to you, it was just like water off the duck's back? Quack, quack, right? What if you did not react to that stuff? Well, guess what? Your emotional intelligence has just gone through the roof. So this is why it's so important to, number one, develop that awareness of what your triggers are, and then to secondly is to not react, but to consciously, positively, in an empowered way, respond to that situation, right? Think about it. Imagine someone was all up in your face, blah, 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 blah. And you just looked at them like this. <laughs> good one, good one, yeah. <laughs> you could do that, you know, that power is within you to respond in that way if you choose to. If you become aware of your triggers and then you do not react, you can respond in a very, very different way. And as you respond consciously, guess what? You are back in the driver's seat of your life. You are moving forward in the direction to create the results that you want to achieve. Now, did you know, guys, check this out. Are you addicted to negative emotions? Ooh, that's a pretty heavy statement, right? Are you addicted to negative emotions? Check this out. Let me share the science with what's going on here. Emotions, those emotions that you feel in your body are actually a neurochemical release inside of the body. So in other words, you have certain thoughts or your observing your environment and you have that certain trigger, your brain talks to all of the glands inside of your body, your adrenal glands and all of these other glands where your hormones reside. When those glands release those chemicals, those chemicals inside of your body is what makes you feel the way that you feel. So it is a neurochemical release right? That neurochemical release, the end result is that emotion that you feel, that anger, frustration, fear, or whatever it is. Like any chemical or substance, with prolonged use of that same emotional cocktail, we get addicted, right? So just like a drug user who feels like they need that drug to, to function in the world, the same thing happens with us. Think about this. If you have consistently felt that emotion called anger, for example, anger has a very specific neurochemical uh, compound that is released into the body. And when you do it with enough repetition and enough repetition, the body begins to crave those chemicals. It begins to crave that emotion. So with that addiction, right, and we'll stick with the example of anger. Your subconscious mind is scanning your environment, looking for those triggers that trigger your anger because your body, it wants its next fix, just like a drug user, because your body thinks that it needs it because you've been doing it for so long and so long and so long. And, and guys, here's the scary part. It's unconscious. 
most of the time we're not even aware of it. Or we'll say things like, yeah, I'm, I'm just an angry person. I, I got it from my father. Or, oh, everything is wrong in the world. Oh, I'm so angry. And we blame those triggers outside of ourselves, where in, in essence, it is your body's coping mechanism for survival, right? Think about it. You know, those extreme cases where the mother has been addicted to heroin and then they're, they're pregnant and then they give birth to the baby, that baby is addicted to heroin, right? It needs those chemicals to survive. So these emotional chemicals, they're the same, right? So again, through awareness, we need to become aware of these emotional addictions. Now, as I went through this work myself, about a year ago, I, I do a daily meditation practice. My meditation helps me to become more aware of my programs. It helps the unconscious to be conscious. I was shocked to become aware that I was addicted to the emotion called anxiety. And, you know, I'd already been meditating daily for six months and I was still not aware of it. There were certain things that I could kind of become aware of, but I, I didn't get it, right, uh, until I, I went through it. And then it, it came to me as, a, as an insight during my meditation. And I thought, really, is, is that true? And then I, I really, for the next few days afterward, I did my best to be a detached observer of me going through my life. And sure enough, I would create... I would create these magical scenarios that would trigger this anxiety so that my body could get that next little fix. Well, I'm very pleased to say now that through the work that I've been doing with these tools that I'm sharing with you, that now it's reduced by 90%, right? Simply with awareness and what I'm about to share with you next. Now, I want you to be honest with yourself here and you can either keep this to yourself or you can share it into the group chat, however you feel. What negative emotions do you most frequently experience? Now, there'll only there might be two, but what is that number one negative emotion that you're really good at, right? And so again, you can do this as your personal exercise, but this is the secret, guys. What are you emotionally addicted to? Well, it's that emotion that you experience most often throughout your day. Now, this is sometimes a, a, a tough pill to swallow in terms of like, it's a bit of a, a bit of a shock when you become aware of it. So let's take a look at the chat box now. Judgment, regret, anger, anxiety, and a bit of paranoia, anger, worry, impatience for results, self-loathing, self-pity, sadness. Wow, thank you guys. Thank you for being so open and sharing. And you know, rest assured now, with this awareness that you have now, you, you are on the path to, to healing and, and removing this negative emotion from your life. So for the next couple of days, I invite you to just keep shining a spotlight on it, because now that you know what that emotion is, now you kind of, we're going to reverse engineer it, right? So you know the emotion that you're really good at, okay, anxiety, anger, whatever it is. Uh, and now you are going to, over the next couple of days, you're going to be aware of your triggers, both internal and external, right? That's my invitation to you is to just really now shine that spotlight on and see what you can discover. All right. So there are three powerful tools to manage your emotions. Three powerful tools to manage your emotions. Let's take a look. This first tool is what I'm just gonna call space. So Viktor Frankl says it very, very well, between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space lies our freedom and power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. So when we talk about emotional intelligence, this gentleman here, he was a prisoner of war in Nazi Germany. 
living, not living, uh, existing in, in the most horrible of conditions in these prisoner of war camps where it was freezing cold, they were forced to work hard labour, they were starving hungry, they were beaten by the guards. I mean, guys, the worst of the worst conditions. Yet he managed to maintain uh, a, a somewhat positive attitude through that whole experience. So what happens for most people is there's that stimulus, right? The stimulus is your trigger, guys. Think stimulus, think trigger, same, same. Now, for most people, there is no space. So it's stimulus, that event, that situation, that trigger, and then there is reaction, right? That reaction is that sadness, worry, anxiety, anger, frustration, and so on, <laughs> whichever emotion you want. Right, so stimulus, reaction, trigger, reaction. What he's saying is that between that stimulus and that response, there is a space. Our job as conscious human beings is to widen that space so that you can consciously respond in a positive and empowering way. You have that power within you. No one no one can make you feel a way that you do not want to feel. When you're resilient, when you have that high emotional intelligence and they're up in your face, <laughs> good one, right? You can respond that way or you can just ignore them or you can choose to engage with them, making sure that you're not reacting out of some old habitual program, right? But that you are consciously responding so that you can control and influence the outcome, right? So inside of that space is our freedom and our power to choose our response. And guess what? In your response lies your growth and your freedom. You are free. You are free from the thoughts and opinions of others. <laughs> so now you are well and truly in the driver's seat of your life. So kind of looks like this. That's the space, your conscious awareness. There's the stimulus, right? Which could be that event, that situation. It could be something unknown, unpredictable. It could be your trigger, all right? That's the stimulus. Now, I remember for most people, the space doesn't exist or it's like a nano centimeter. So most people will react. And that reaction is anger frustration, sadness, fear, hopelessness. Choose your negative emotion there when we react. Now, what our job is, guys, is to develop greater conscious awareness. And we want to widen that space. And as we make room in that space, now we're able to consciously respond, right? We can reflect. Did you know that if someone says something to you, you do not have to react in a nanosecond? You, you don't. You can listen to what they say and you can say, thank you. Let me get back to you. Now, on the inside, you might be boiling and you want to grab them by the neck. and But you can, thank you, you can create that space, right? You can take a breath. You can count to 10. You can say, I'll get back to you. You can say, give me 24 hours. Let me reflect on that, right? So you're going to reflect. You're going to consciously choose an action. You're going to make an empowered decision. You're going to have a conscious choice about what to do. <laughs> and sometimes it might mean that you have a mature conversation with this other person. And you can do that because you are not reacting. You're choosing to respond. Now, I think we can create a little acronym for this space thing here, which is going to help us to practice it and to actually apply it into our daily lives. So when you feel that you're about to be triggered, right, you see that trigger, maybe you can feel those negative emotions coming up. The first thing you need to do, stop. Just whatever you're doing, unless you're driving on a busy road, whatever you're doing, just stop. 
just you want to you need to what we call interrupt your own pattern so a pattern of behavior is most of the time it's unconscious remember guys 95 percent of the day you're operating on your unconscious patterns of behavior uh, and actions and, and and belief systems and so on so if you want to you need to interrupt that pattern right think about it who here has children uh, I, I don't i've got three cats so but for those of you that have children what do you do when your child is having a tantrum when they're like nah, 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 they're, they're on the floor and they're kicking and screaming and they're doing what they do what do most of you do to stop that behavior anyone what do you do well generally you'll get them to you'll change their behavior you'll get them to stop that behavior by getting them to move their body or we try to bribe them, right, with an ice cream or to play their favorite toy or an extra 30 minutes on the iPad, right? So what we do most of the time is we try to interrupt, we try to stop that unconscious behavior, right? So we can do the same things with ourselves, right? So whenever you're feeling those emotions, those negative emotions rising, just stop. Now, stopping isn't enough. You need to... <laughs> You need to give yourself that space. So you need to stop what you're doing and then pause, right? So what do I mean by pause? Take a breath, count to 10, change your environment, walk away, right? Do whatever you need to do to give yourself more space, right? Stopping is a good start, but you need to make that space wider by pausing to gather your thoughts, yeah? So you're going to stop, you're going to pause, then you're going to shine that spotlight on and, and you'll ask yourself, huh, that's an interesting trigger. Hmm, I'm glad I'm aware of that now. Oh, gosh, I wonder, does that happen multiple times per day? Hmm, I wonder, right? And you're just going to do whatever you need to do to create more awareness about that trigger about that event or that situation, right? And you're just going to be more aware. You know what? It might to just be listening, right? Especially if it's your husband or your wife going off on you and you want to react, right? You want to win the argument. What if you just stopped and you paused and you just became aware, hmm, my wife is talking at me in a certain way and gee whiz, I want to win this argument. But you know what? I love and respect her too much to just win this argument for the sake of my own ego. I wonder what would happen if I just listened. Then you just listen. And then she's saying her thing and you say, anything else? And she keeps talking. You say, anything else? Anything else? Anything else? And then, then what will happen? <sighs> and then you're able to then have a mature conversation. When two adults are in that elevated emotion called anger or frustration, it often doesn't have a very good outcome. So you can be the bigger man or woman, let them run out of steam, your husband, your wife, your co-worker, whoever it is, let them do their thing, anything else, anything else, anything else, and just notice your reaction. Notice the tension in your body. Notice the way that you're breathing. Notice your thoughts in that moment. Just be aware, right? Remember, guys, this is about not reacting, right? So you're stopping, you're pausing, you're shining the spotlight to create awareness. What do you think C stands for, guys? What does C stand for? Who would like to guess? Anyone for C? Anyone for C? No? Well, if you've, if you've made it this far and you've been able to stop, you've been able to pause and you've created awareness about the situation, uh, pretty close there, guys. We, we're, I'm going to call it the consequences, right? So before you take the action, right? You are going to make a decision. You are going to make a conscious choice. Now, consequences, I don't mean just
bad consequences here. By consequences, it does not, it's not a negative. Consequences means I'm about to do this action and the consequences are this. Or if I take this action, these are going to be the consequences. Or maybe there's a third action and these are going to be the consequences, right? So you've created this beautiful space for yourself, right? And so you want to just with that extra awareness that you have developed, you'll want to consciously choose what your next step is. So to do that consciously, it's almost like that detached observer. And you think, if I do this, here are those chain of events. And this is going to create that chain of events. Well, guess what? With that greater awareness that this action will create that chain of events, now you can make a more informed decision, a conscious, empowered response to whatever's going on in your environment. Does this make sense? Yeah? So finally, you've done all of that, guys. You've created that hyper awareness. You've looked at the consequences. What is E? What does E stand for? It's time to do what now? I think, did some of you share it before? Not quite yet. What have we got? Yeah. Oh, very good. Chia. Yes. Engage. Now you want to engage, right? And Or execute. Max is also, is also correct. So engage. What does engage mean? Take that action. Right now, it's time to engage. It's time to move forward. You don't want to procrastinate. You've created so much more awareness than you would normally, right? Think about this. Normally, <laughs> stimulus, reaction, usually ends in tears, boo-hoo, somehow, some way. So now you've stopped. You've given yourself the pause. You sh shine the spotlight. You've given it. You've thought about the consequences and the chain of events. Now you engage, right? And, and you take action, whatever that action is. Speak to that person, send that email, do this, do that, whatever it is. You are now, you have done your best that you can with the resources that you have to make a very conscious and empowering decision, no matter the trigger, no matter the situation and no matter the event. You have in this moment, in this beautiful, magical, sacred space, you have reclaimed your power to create the life that you want and deserve. So this is the first powerful tool, guys, that I would like to for you guys to practice. The second main tool is to change your focus by asking better questions. So for the leaders uh, on the call today, uh, yes, you can ask these questions to your subordinates as like coaching questions or general leadership questions. But remember, today is about your emotional intelligence first. So these are coaching questions that you actually ask yourself, right? And by the way, if you guys have some additional suggestions for awesome, powerful questions that you can ask yourself to change your focus, then you can pop those into the chat box. Let's take a look at some examples first. So here we are. Basically, what do you think if we continue to ask ourselves disempowering questions? Well, that is going to change our focus on the things that are not working in our life. Therefore, the negative things that are happening in our life. And as we think about those negative things, we know that negative thinking causes negative emotion. So if you want to feel good, and it feels good to feel good or feels great to feel great, then you want to ask yourself better questions, right? Tony Robbins says this very good. The quality of your life is determined by the quality of the questions that you ask yourself. So as you ask empowering questions, those questions are solution focused, moving in the direction of improvement and growth, then those positive questions will come up with much, much better answers and are going to lead you closer to the results that you want to achieve. As you do that, you feel good and it feels good to feel good. So here are some disempowering questions. 
Why does this happen to me? <laughs> why does this always, why does this always happen to me? And then you're going to come up with a whole list of bullshit excuses why this happens to you. And none of it is true, right? It's all just mind made BS. So a better question to ask is, what can I learn from this? Right? What can I learn from this? Disempowering question. What went wrong? A better question. What is good about this? Right? Because inevitably, guys, there are going to be situations and events that are outside of our control that we would initially define as being bad or negative. That's a given. We only need to look at lockdown. I think you guys in Malaysia are in lockdown number three. We're kind of in lockdown number three here. It's like, it's really frustrating and it's really annoying, except that it's not because you can change your focus. You can focus on something else and you can focus on what is good about this event, this situation. Right. So these powerful questions, guys, that you can ask yourself by changing your focus, you can ask these questions inside of that space. Right. Inside of that space is a beautiful time when you're considering those consequences and how you're going to engage. That's a beautiful time to ask these questions. Why am I so stupid? What's missing? Right. What's missing? That's OK. Why is every, everything so difficult? Who can help me with this? Who, who can mentor me? Who can I speak to? Who's done this before? Who could be a role model? Are all examples of that question. What's the problem with this? What can we do differently? Who messed this up? Who did this? How can I help? All right? Now, I don't mean to be naive here, guys. If you're working in a business and there are problems and challenges going on, it's not just to try to sweep it under the carpet and say, hey, hey, look at all these unicorns and rainbows. We live in a perfect world. This is not what I'm talking about. These are those daily conversations that you have with yourself that could be more empowering and less disempowering. If you are trying to get to the root cause of the problem in the organization or the project or whatever, then yeah, you will ask some direct questions to get to the root cause, you know, the five why analysis or the fishbone and all these different other uh, tools and techniques, strategic tools and techniques to get to the root cause of the problem. But then for sure, you want to shift your focus towards the solution. These examples here, though, are the conversations that you're having with yourself. Why am I unlucky in love? <laughs> it's not fair. How can I attract my soulmate? See, whatever questions you repeatedly ask yourself, your subconscious mind is going to scan the environment to help you find those questions that you regularly ask yourself. So in other words, when you continually ask yourself these disempowering questions, <laughs> your subconscious mind is going to give you events, situations and triggers that are going to prove that that is true. Even though it's not, it's just the program. You can change your program. So by asking yourself empowering questions, you've shifted your focus on options and possibilities and what could be good and so on. So now with repetition, your subconscious mind is scanning the environment to give you those answers that were always there. Let me say that again. Your subconscious mind is going to scan the environment for the answers and solutions that were always there. We just couldn't see them because we were so focused on that pile of brown smelly stuff. Right. And, and, and so that's not the way forward. You want to better control your emotions. You must manage your focus. Right. And what have we got in the chat box here? What happens to me is empowering me. Yeah. That's another one that Tony says life isn't, Oh, check this out. Life is not happening to me. It's happening for me. Right. Imagine for a moment, guys, life, 
It's not against you. Why does this happen to me? Life, oh, why are you doing that to me, life? No, life is happening for me. Even if that might be a tough lesson from time to time, maybe a relationship broke down, maybe a lost job, whatever it is, that was part of the journey that you needed in life that has got you to this point in time. So no, guys, what if life is happening for you, for the best of you? Why so many people are so selfish? Well, I just move on and continue to identify who are worth bringing into my life. Beautiful. So true. So true to Veronica. Yeah. God, awesome. Thank you. Now, the final little tool, guys, that I want to share with you, and you may have heard me talk about this before, is neuro-linguistic programming. So when organizations invite me in to do uh, team building, to do leadership programs, to do coaching programs, the tools of NLP, neuro-linguistic program, is what I use with these organizations. So NLP is a set of tools, techniques, and strategies modeled from uh, psychologists, psychiatrists, hypnotherapists, family therapists, and world-class performers. In, in other words, it just wasn't made up. These tools of NLP, they were replicated. They were modeled from the best of the best in the world. Right now, there are a lot of specific tools for emotional control inside of NLP. First one, and I start every training, whether it's a corporate or a public program, with a growth mindset, right? So understanding the principles and the neuroscience behind a growth mindset. That's for your emotional control. How to do positive thinking, a little bit on what we touched on today inside of the space. Enhanced awareness. So we learned a few tools today on how to shine the light to increase your awareness. NLP has even more tools to do that. The agreement frame is a linguistic technique, a language pattern, a pattern of words that you can use to reduce conflict, especially in an organization or with your wife. And as you're able to reduce conflict, then obviously you're able to better manage your emotion. Reframing is a coaching tool for yourself or coaching others to transform a negative event or experience into positive learnings. And those positive learnings set you free, right? This is how you release. I, uh, you remember we talked about the emotional refractory period where you're holding on to a negative emotion for a long time. Reframing can help let it go once and for all. Perceptual position is about looking at that event with that other person from three different perspectives to learn the lesson and then let it go. NLP presuppositions, what does that mean in English? Empowering belief systems. We can install empowering belief systems, which give us empowered emotions. More tools on managing your emotional state by understanding the mechanics of how all of this works. And then finally, timeline therapy. Timeline therapy is the world's most advanced coaching tool to remember, uh, remember to let go of uh, negative emotion, including heavy emotion such as uh, trauma and betrayal and, and sadness and all of those very heavy emotions. Timeline therapy can remove that once and for all. So guys, if you'd like to learn more about NLP, we do have our training coming up in about one month from today. Uh, the training is hosted here in Bangkok, but we run it as a hybrid training. So you're also able to join virtually from anywhere in the world. And uh, it's a five day course. Uh, it's from 9am to 7pm Thai time. So Malaysia uh, plus one hour. And your special webinar investment for today is 50,000 baht. Or if you prefer a five month payment plan, we can also do that at 10,500 per month. You know, I, I had a couple of messages from some of you joining us today. You know, I want to be an EQ coach or I want to train people on EQ. Everything that I've shared with you today is from the world of NLP and through uh, mine and Christy's own personal development journey. Things that we've kind of figured out along the way, but NLP was the start of this journey. So if you do want to teach emotional intelligence tools to other people, 
NLP is the must have toolkit that you need in your possession. And maybe you've already learned NLP or you're looking to advance uh, the, the, the support, the help and growth that you can offer to others. Well, you'd be interested in the ICF Leadership Coaching Certification, which is 17 to 18 of July. There's some pre-study, there's two days live virtual training, and then we have some group coaching afterwards. Uh, 55,000 for payment in full or a five month payment plan. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed session, today's session as much as I did. Um, as you can see, it's a, it's a topic that I, I'm very, very passionate about. It's guys, when you get this and you know, whether it's you know, the emotional addiction, whether that was your number one takeaway for today or how you can use space, whatever it is for you, please uh, apply it into your life as soon as possible because why is this so important? Remember guys, emotions drive behavior and your behavior, your actions create your results. So the results that you achieve are in direct proportion to your ability to manage your emotional state. Low emotions, low behavior, low results, high emotions. And when I say high, I mean positive, then better uh, behavior, better results. So thank you all very much, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Take care, stay safe, stay awesome, and uh, hope to welcome to you to one of our trainings soon. Take care. Bye for now.